If you would state your name for the record and spell your last name, please. Uh, Ronnie Crosby, C-R-O-S-B-Y. Good morning, Mr. Crosby. Good morning. Just want to go over a few things uh, very quickly in reply to some of the uh, defense case. And the first thing I want to ask you is, you had previously testified about your close relationship with Paul, didn't you? Uh, yes, I, I did. All right. And over the years, did you ever have call to ride around the property with, with Paul, yours or his? Um, uh, more on my property, but some uh, on more, one or more occasions at Moselle as yeah. well. What, if anything, would y'all carry when y'all rode around the property yeah, like that? Why? This is about Paul? In response. Uh, yes, sir. This will be in specific response to the defendant's testimony uh, and in his statements as well. I can be specific. I don't want to do a speaking response, um, be it, but uh, I, can, I can ask another question and maybe, maybe put it in focus, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Uh, you heard uh, prior testimony that uh, you don't go around looking for hogs in the daytime because they're nocturnal from the defendant, did you not? Or are you familiar that that was what was said? Objection, Your Honor, if it's based on what he's heard or seen. I mean, is this a, 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 a comment made to him? Or if we're going to go into, delve into the appropriate way to hunt hogs day or night? I mean, this is not proper rule of I object. All right. You want me to? Uh, yeah, if you don't mind asking a question again. Sure. Uh, all right. The first question is, have you gone riding around the property with your property or the Moselle property with Paul before? Um, I have. All right. And what, if anything, would y'all carry when you would go riding the property? I believe the only time I rode with Paul was, uh, would have been looking, riding looking for hogs, looking uh, and hogs. more so on my property. All right. And what, if anything, would you carry when y'all were looking for hogs? Objection, Your Honor. Riding with Paul on his property, not Moselle. Objection is overruled. Well, people who have hogs on their property, uh, as a general rule, you would always take a rifle with you, uh, be it day or night, um, because you never know when you're going to see hogs and, and because they are such a nuisance, as I spoke to earlier in my testimony, um, you, you always want to be, you know, prepared to, to shoot them. So you would generally have uh, some type of rifle and, and, and we, uh, with you, a long gun. Objection, Your Honor. He's giving an opinion. He's not been qualified as an expert. Objection no. overruled. All right. Um, you've had plenty of experience in killing hogs on your property? Yes, I would disagree with Mr. Hartpootley, and I am pretty much an expert about killing hogs. All right. And you've had <laughs> plenty of opportunity to go hunt with Paul. Objection, Your Honor. I apologize to the witness. And you've had plenty of opportunity to go hunt with Paul or have him hunt on your property? Yeah, yes, I've been with him, and he's been on my property many more times. I didn't go with him every time he was on my property, but that's the general rule that you would have a rifle of some sort. Paul as this jury's been told over and over, was fond of that 300 blackout. I've been with him while he had it. I usually use some other type of uh, AR-framed uh, gun to shoot hogs. A 223? Well, a 223 or, or a, a, a 6.5 Creedmoor, which is on an AR-10 frame. Would, uh, is it common, though, to, to carry your rifle and look for hogs in the daytime and to see hogs in the daytime? Um, Yes. Um, you don't always see them. Sometimes night's better if you're using a night vision scope, but uh, I've killed hundreds of hogs in the daytime uh, riding. It's, it's, it's just something because they're such a nuisance in the low country and really across the state right now and across the south that uh, we have a rule that you don't ride the property without a rifle because you want to try to eliminate as many hogs as you can, and we also trap them. To your observation, did Alec have a good relationship with the local law enforcement community? My observation was Alec had a very good relationship with, uh, be probably better than the rest of us, saving his father. Um, did you on multiple occasions go over in great detail uh, Alec's original story as to what he did on the night of the murders? 
On more than one occasion, um, we discussed his story as I testified to, uh, I don't know how many weeks ago that was, but it was, it was a while. And what, if anything, did the defendant tell you about whether or not he checked Paul and Maggie before calling 911? My um, understanding of what he told me was that he uh, checked them before he called 911. And was he clear on that point to you? It, that was clear to me. When was the first time you've heard the defendant's latest story admitting that he was, in fact, at the kennels minutes before the victims were killed? I haven't watched uh, all of this trial uh, like a lot of people have, but when I heard that um, Ellick was taking the stand, I believe it was last Thursday, I did uh, set up my workstation so that I could uh, watch his testimony, and it would have been uh, when he told, told you that he was at the kennels was the first time that I'd ever heard that. Did Alec ever tell you that he thought the boat case had anything to do with the murders? Consistent with what Alec told uh, in his testimony, he specifically told me that and told us that he did not believe that anyone on the boat had anything to do with it. I don't recall any other conversations uh, with him related to the boat case, but, but he, he specifically did not believe, and I think that's what he said last week, that anybody owned the boat. But as far as anybody outside, you know, there was a lot of speculation going on, but I don't remember ever discussing that with him. And with him. Right, because we, we wouldn't know. I, I mean, everything beyond was, you know, I, I, I don't know. It, it would have been speculation, but I, I didn't have a conversation with him about that. Did you ever have a conversation with the defendant about Barrett Bulware needing money because of his illness? And you're referring to, uh, yes, I did. Uh, in, in um, I believe it would have been June of 2018. Uh, Barrett and uh, Alec were uh, very, what I consider to be very close. Improper reply. Um, yes, sir. He, uh, the defendant during cross-examination was specifically asked about uh, that, this particular um, transaction and uh, that we're about to discuss. And uh, Mr. Crosby's testimony would be in response to what the defendant said about uh, the money, and in as much as he tried to imply that, well, Barrett kind of owed me money anyway uh, as a justification for him stealing money from one of his best friends. He did not ask him about a conversation he had with Mr. Crosby about that money. That's, this isn't proper reply. This is going off on another tangent. Uh, overall, the objection. Can you tell us about uh, that conversation, please, Mr. Crosby? Yes, um, in the and in, in, if my year's wrong, but I believe because I, I didn't know exactly what you're going to ask me, and I can go back and look at documents. But I'm sure it's in one of these exhibits when that occurred. The, the materials that Miss Seconder put in. I believe in June of 2018, uh, Barrett, who was a good friend of uh, Alex, a uh, clo lot closer to me. I think he, they were, in my perception, very close friends. But I had become friends with him and, and had done a couple of real estate transactions with him. That summer, I received a call from his son-in-law. Barrett was in the Mayo Clinic um, with stage four colon cancer. Objections overruled. I, I do know for a fact that he was in the uh, Mayo Clinic. Uh, suffering being treated for stage four colon cancer and I received a call as to whether I could help um, Barrett financially. Your Honor, hearsay, a call. Um, because his wife did not have enough money to stay, Barrett had some waterfront lots. Um, 
objection, Your Honor, hearsay. All this material came from somebody else. The objection on the I do, I do know this from first-hand knowledge, Mr. Waters. Um, I had already uh, bought a lot from him, but anyway, he had a lot that he asked if I would buy so that they would have money to be able to, for his wife to stay down in Jacksonville um, while he was receiving cancer treatments. And I had a conversation with uh, Alec about that. Tell us about the conversation you had with Alec about that, please. I just told him, man, it's, it's bad. You know, Barrett's... Looks like he's going to die, and he did die in September of that year. Um, and he, he acknowledged it, and he it said that it was good what I was doing um, for Barrett because he, he knew that he was in bad financial shape and, and, and obviously bad health. All right. And uh, you're obviously a member of this law firm, and your review of the records as all of this came to light, was that did that conversation take place around the time that the defendant – was stealing some of Barrett's money? Yes, uh, through this investigation uh, that y'all have heard about into the financial stuff starting in uh, early September of 2021, we started going through a lot of files and as part of that process somewhere um, I determined that in June of 2018, I believe, and I can't tell you the exact figure, but I believe it was a seventy a seventy something thousand dollar insurance check uh, that was came to the firm on behalf of Mr. Bowyer that uh, didn't go through the firm. It was just take uh, Alec took it uh, that same month that we had that conversation, and then later there was some more money taken after he died. Show you what's been marked as Exhibit 575. States 575. See if you recognize that. Is that Dave, David? Is that one of the sled agents? Do not recognize him. Is that David Williams? Well, I'm asking you. I believe that's David Williams. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'd offer States 575 in the evidence. Objection relevance. What is the relevance? Testified that when he had that initial interview with David Owen on June 8th, uh, you know, as he manufactured his decision to lie about such a crucial fact, it was because he thought that David Williams was the guy interviewing him. This is simply a picture of David Williams. The jury can assess the legitimacy of that claim. Your Honor, I never ever said David Williams. He said David. That's the record. Uh, Judge never. Said that guy. It's admitted over objection. Can I have the only first? That's who you recognize as David Williams? Yes, um, I've, I didn't know him. I got to know him through this investigation, and uh, I do believe he was the agent that was involved in the uh, the case with Mr. Greg, Chief Greg Alexander that was referenced. Clearly not David Owen, though, correct? Well, that's not David Owen. All right. um, have you ever tried cases with Ellen? I handled a lot of cases with Ellen. I believe... The only case I tried to jury with Alec was actually here, here in this courtroom. Did you observe him being able to get emotional during that closing argument? Um, yes, as a couple months ago when we talked and, and you asked me what kind of lawyer Alec was, and I told you he was a good lawyer, and, and uh, one of the things that I think I explained to you was that he was a, a, a theatrical type presence in the courtroom, and, and, and he could get very emotional doing closing arguments in front of a jury. Thank you. Please answer any questions the defense may have. Um, I hate to go here, but let's talk about hog hunting, which I know nothing about, okay? <laughs> you might so, not want to go there then. <laughs> 
I've been here so long, I think I probably do need to learn how to hog hunt. Um, but I guess my first question is this. You, did you ever ride Moselle with Alec? Did you ride around Moselle with Alec? Probably. Uh, I know I dove hunted there, so I, I, I believe I rode on a ranger, but I don't ever remember doing much riding with, with Alec uh, at Moselle. But I know I dove hunted there, and sure, I rode in a, in a ranger or some type of ATV with Alec, but I don't have a specific. Well, when you're riding around dove hunting, you got a gun with you, right? You would. Would you take a shotgun to hunt up? Yes. Would you take an AR weapon too? No. Why? I mean, them hogs are out there, right? Well, they don't usually come in a dove field when you're shooting dove. So oh. I, I don't know. I just you you just wouldn't, uh, Mr. Uh, Hartpootlian, uh, typically. I mean, but daytime, you're riding around the property. You got a shotgun. You got a slug in that shotgun, or are you using bird shot? Uh, you would shoot um, bird shot. Okay. So if a hog came up, nothing you could do. If a hog came into a dove field with a bunch of dove hunters, well, maybe they would shoot way. at him regardless. <laughs> maybe you're on your way to the dove field. You don't. The dove field's not right next to the house, is it? Uh, it's yes. It's right within a few a couple few hundred yards. Boarded by the swamp. The swamp's on one end of it, yeah. Okay, and where do the hogs live during the day, primarily? Well, they can live in a the swamp, they can live in a bay, you know, it could be anywhere, but largely in the swamp. The swamp. So a hog could have come out of that swamp? Yes. And you were unarmed? As I said, if a hog came in a dove field near somebody dove hunting, they would probably shot it with bird shot. Would that kill a hog? If, if it was close enough, but, okay. but unlikely. But unlikely. So you have, in fact, ridden around Moselle without a gun to kill a hog, appropriate gun to kill a hog. Well, yes, if I was going over to the dove field, I you, wouldn't have one. But you, you've never ridden as Paul and Alec did that afternoon, just looking at different, like where deer, deer they, what do they call them? Where they plant stuff for deer? Food plots? Yeah. Um, or um, looking around at uh, how these fruit trees were doing. Remember the... the um, <coughs> Snapchat video. I, I've never uh, done that with Alec, and uh, that that I recall. But it, I could have in the past. But I, I don't have a specific recollection. Or where they planted some corn for? I guess you use corn for deer and ducks. Uh, you do, but you don't plant them in the same spot. No, I, I, I get that. Uh, one would be near a pond or in a pond or around a pond. Correct. They had a duck pond. Right, and then the others would just be out where the deer might come out and try to feed, right? I, look, we don't need to go there. <laughs> yeah, I don't think, yeah. Okay, but um, you've never rode around like that with them, looking at different plantings and that you that you remember. I don't have a specific recollection of doing that with Alex. Okay, there. but, but, and would you, you're not telling this jury that they would not do, they would not, they would do that with, uh, without a um, blackout, uh, they could, I mean, would it bother you or offend you or scare you that he, they're riding around the property during the daytime without the blackout? No, I, I was answering questions about what's normal if you were looking for hogs or if we were just riding my property. Um, I mean, most people carry a gun, but no, I, I have no idea what they had with them or what they were doing. And I think Al testified they were looking for signs of hogs because you could come back. It'd be a lot easier to find those hogs at night, right? They come out more likely at night than they do during the day. They can become nocturnal when they have a lot of pressure, but I've, I, like, as I said before, I've shot. A, I mean, we've shot a lot of hogs in the daytime. Sure. You can ride up on them, and and yeah. But does anybody has anybody testified they were out looking to shoot hogs that afternoon? I don't know what all the testimony's been in this okay. this trial. All I'm saying is there seems to be some implication they would not ride around the property without an AR or some sort of blackout. You, you can't testify to that, right? I cannot. Okay. So let's, let's talk a little bit about what you heard from Alec the night of June 7th. Um, you would agree with me that, <clears throat> um, well, let's ask it this way. What your practice is primarily personal injury, is that correct? It is. Catastrophic injuries. 
Well, I, I handle a lot of catastrophic injury cases. Cases, for instance, where uh, a husband and wife are riding down the road and hit by a tractor trailer. And by way of example, maybe you could give me something more specific. Husband's killed, wife's severely injured. That kind of thing. Yeah. Now, is it your experience in people who undergo, maybe they're not hurt, but their loved one is hurt, maybe killed, um, in that situation, that's a traumatic experience for the surviving person, correct? To see their loved one killed? Yes. Okay. And so when you sit down with those folks and be, you know, begin to recount with them, what happened that night? Oftentimes, I do a little work like you do, um, oftentimes those folks misremember or get times wrong or because they went through this very traumatic experience and the closer to that experience, the more likely they are to get some things wrong. Times, for instance. Is that your experience? They can, but I also find that uh, people who have been in, uh, involved in traumatic experiences try to be uh, very, uh, try to be very accurate with the details because they know it's important to me representing them. And typically, you don't go out to the scene of the crime and interview, or the scene of the accident interview them that night, do you? Typically. Uh, well, typically you don't because you, you know you don't know it. That it's happened. Um, well, sometimes in the old days they used to do that, but they don't do that anymore, right? It, th that would be very rare. So you're seeing them in your office weeks later? It, it can be. It can be days, can be weeks. Okay. And in that atmosphere, um, it's a little more conducive to them being as accurate as possible, right? It, it, it is, but, you know, oftentimes we also have the benefit of recorded interviews when there's a catastrophic injury. Typically the uh, highway patrol will get, try to interview people as quickly as they can, and they will, uh, we oftentimes have it on video off a dash cam or sometimes body cam, but, and, and a lot of times written statements. And written statements from witnesses that saw it happen. Correct. And so when you interview those people, they have the benefit of, reviewing whatever you have to help them get a better recollection of what happened, correct? That's, that's correct. Okay. So the instance you're talking about where um, Alec uh, told you he turned him over before um, he made the 911 call, whatever it was, I'm not quite sure, before I think is what you said. Um, if that would be inconsistent with something he says later on after having reviewed other people's statements, looking at video, um, that would not be unusual in your business. I think you just said it would not be unusual, correct? You, strike you, that, strike you, that, you, strike You're, you're that. trying to take me somewhere that you probably don't want to. Oh, I, 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 no, I think I, I want to. And, and the question. <coughs> withdraw the question. Let me ask you this question. Maybe let's get to the, to the meat of matter here. Have you had to come out of pocket to pay back the money he stole? Yes, and if how, you... How much? I, I, don't tell me you don't know. Well, we're still counting, Mr. Hartpootland. Well, how much have you paid so far? We have had to uh, borrow millions to pay back. No, how Christmas much have scheme. you had to come out of pocket? Well, when you borrow it, you got to pay it back, and I couldn't tell you how much has exactly been paid back uh, as of we sit here today. But Ten yes, and, and if you're implying that I would come in here and somehow shade truth in any way because of that, that's, I would take high offense with that, Mr. Well, Hartpootling. I'm concerned about your high offense. Are you angry at him for stealing your money? I have no feeling one way or the you other. I don't have any feeling about Alec Murdoch betraying you and stealing your money. You're, I, I admire you. I don't know that I can look beyond that. Objection, Your Honor. Objection is sustained. There's not a question the jury is to disregard the argument. You are not angry with Alec Murdoch? I have had anger with him, extreme anger, Mr. Hart Putlin, because of what he did to my law firm, my partners, my client, his, his clients, our clients, what he did to his family, what he's did to so many people. Yes, I experienced a lot of anger. And but you can't walk way. around with anger. You have to find a way to deal with it and move forward. And I have done that. And if you suggest you are dead wrong, if you think I've come in here and told this jury something because of money, 
when we, we're talking about two people who were brutally murdered, then you're, you're, you're headed in the wrong direction. Do you think he did it? Do I, don't have, he... I don't have an opinion. I don't have the benefit of the materials you have. Well, let me ask you this. You're angry with him, stole millions of dollars from your firm. You admit your firm's not even called the Murdoch firm anymore, right? It is not. I don't admit that I'm angry right now. I told you I've gotten away from that. I don't have any feelings because you can't walk around with anger. I have been very, very angry about it because of what he's done. And he did it in a very callous way, a very deceitful way. And you carry no, I'm sorry, maybe I just saw some anger there. Were you angry just a moment ago? No, you keep trying to push a question and don't want to accept my answer. Which is what it is. That you've just given your, your, your zen, your nirvana, your whatever the... Your Honor, objection. Are you, Mr. Harpootlin, I came to the scene of these murders to support my partner. I was there. I saw things that hadn't even been talked about in this courtroom. I was there. I, I, I love Paul very much. I thought I knew who Alec was. I did not. And it's hard... To, 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 you might not understand, but it's just it's hard to, to, to walk around with, with anger and hard to even walk around with it when it's with somebody who you didn't know and didn't understand. So you, you, you might have, have be that way, but, you know, I've got a function. I've got a family. I've got to move on with life. Were you aware that he went to rehab in 2017? I was not, really? other than what, what was said uh, by Alec in this courtroom. You never were aware he had a drug problem? I was unaware. Okay. Sort of. And, you, and, and if I would have been known, I would have tried to help him. You indicated that uh, he could be emotional in trying a case, correct? He, he could be. He, could, he was uh, theatric, much like his father and grandfather had a courtroom theatrics, uh, and, and he could be emotional. Any of your other partners that way? Johnny Parker? No, Johnny's quite the opposite. Johnny's very... Uh, Laconic, I believe, is the best yeah, way to Yeah, he, he doesn't show emotion. Who, any, nobody else in your firm was theatric or emotional? Not to Alex's uh, level. You don't know any other lawyers in the state that go to that level? You're asking me a question right now. I don't know. You might um, yourself. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what other lawyers do. I'm usually... Uh, trying cases against defense attorneys, so I don't, I don't get to see plaintiff's lawyers anymore. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for... Well, let me ask you one last thing. This Bulware guy that he stole all the money from? Mr. Bulware, remember him? Yes, I remember him. How much money did you steal from him? Do you remember? He stole 70 something thousand in June of 2018. Mr. Bulware died in September, I believe, of 2018, and I believe another 270-something thousand after Mr. Bowers' death sometime in, uh, in or around February of 2019. Have you and your partners paid Mr. Bowers' estate or his folks back? Yes, I met with them personally. Okay. And even though it's cost you your firm and it's cost millions of dollars to you, you have forgiven him? You bear him I, I, no I, I didn't say I forgave him. You're just not angry about it anymore. I said I have no feelings. And, and I had to work on that, Mr. Hartpootlin. You know, it, it, when you go through what we've gone through, not only the trauma of losing people we loved in a double homicide, seeing the out aftermath and then learning that someone you've worked with for more than 20 years had been stealing for throughout a period of time and deceiving us, there's a lot of emotion there. And yes, it, it, it was bad in the fall of 2021, and I have found a way to have no feelings. It's not forgiveness, it's just I don't so you're have not any angry feelings. here today. You're not angry at him at I, all. I'm, I'm not angry. If, okay. if, if I raise my voice, it's only because of the implication that you were trying to the make. The implication out of it. that you might not want to help him in front of this jury here today because. I, because let me finish the question. Because he destroyed your firm, he stole millions of dollars you had to pay back, um, he deceived you. You've, all that's away and is not influencing your, your uh, testimony here today at all. If you'd answer that yes or no, then you can explain. 
All those things happened, and it does not influence my testimony. I take the oath that I just took very seriously. And if you've got any indication that anything I said was inaccurate, I'll be glad to, to, to address it with you. Well, the jury can judge that. Thank you. How long did you know Alec? Since the late 90s. And knowing what you know now, was he able to look you in your eye and lie convincing to you day in and day out? He did. And was he able to look juries in the eye and display emotion? That is not appropriate <coughs> redirect. And it's leading. The objection is sustained. Mr. Harpootlan asked you about some of the things that you have gone through. And is your issue with Mr. Harpootlan's questioning the implication that you would come in and shade things in front of this jury? Objection. Leading. What is your concern with Mr. Harpootlan's questioning of you? That you? Can you express that to the jury, please? All that he just went through with you sitting up on the stand having to deal with this, what is your problem with what he was trying to say? Well, I fortunately, um, well, to start with, I took an oath to tell the truth. Um, but we as lawyers also have oaths and obligations to a court. And, and, and it goes a lot deeper than just that oath. Uh, we, we, we are bound by rules of professional conduct ethical rules um, that I take very seriously as a lawyer. Um, to my knowledge, I enjoy a very good reputation as far as being a person of integrity. And that's what I took issue with, is him impugn attempting, because he cannot impugn my integrity. That's fair. Would you take a 22 if you went out looking for hogs? Uh, Possibly a 22 Magnum, which is a long rifle. Which is a long rifle? Yes. You take a long rifle, not a pistol, is that correct? Yeah, I, I, I would never. I'm not a good shot with a pistol, but I would never take a pistol. And what was Paul's favorite gun for shooting hogs with? I, I knew he he uh, he always had a 300 blackout, but I, I don't know if he shot him with anything else. Thank you. Nothing further. Anything further? I'm sorry, Your Honor, I just can't leave this alone. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> is the 300 blackout that's in evidence his favorite? The 300 blackout with a thermal scope on it? Yes. Okay, thank you. Step down. <laughs> 